Okay, good evening everybody. Welcome to another presentation of AG Languages. This time we're gonna have Erin Lundblom. She's the designated speaker for our presentation tonight. She has been a teacher for over 19 years and she holds a TEFL certification from Cambridge. She has enjoyed working with students of all ages from all over the world, including China, Costa Rica, Peru, Mexico, United States, and many more. In classrooms, one-on-one, -on -one, and in blended learning environments. She also has been a public speaker for over 30 years. She gives public demonstrations on a regular basis as part of a worldwide educational program. She spends her free time drawing, cooking, and gardening. Her belief is that anyone with patience and determination can learn a different language. Welcome, Erin. Thank you for being here. You may start your presentation now. Thank you, Silvana, and thank you everyone for coming to this demonstration. I'm so happy uh, to have the opportunity to talk to you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. We got a lot of things to cover, so let's go. First of all, we're gonna talk about STT. What in the world is STT? I want you to go ahead and whoop, Go ahead and take a look at our poll. And go ahead uh, at the <laughs> in the chat box if you could take a look at the poll. What do you guys think? Okay. What do you think STT stands for? Strong teacher time, student talk time, or strategy test taking? What do you guys think? Go ahead and take the poll. And we'll look at it in just a moment. What do you guys think? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our results uh, for the poll. What does STT stand for? Student talk time. Yes, the majority of you got it right. Student talk time, that's what we're gonna talk about. We need to learn why is it important? What are the problems? And especially what are our solutions for these problems? So let's go ahead and get started. Why is it so important? You know? uh, our students need to practice speaking and learning. And uh, this is very important for them because why learn the language if you're not gonna speak and if you're not going to be able to use it in, a day, in your daily life, right? So that's one of the main reasons why uh, student talk time is so important. It engages the learner. It gets them to feel comfortable so that number three, they can have a safe environment to make those errors so that in the real world, they will be prepared, okay? And last but not least, it gives us a break. Maybe we have eight hours of classes, 10 students in each class. That's a lot of talking time, right? We need to take a break and let them talk for a little bit. So these are the reasons why it's so important that our students are talking more. Usually they say around 70% of the time, the student needs to be talking and we need to facilitate their learning. That's why we're there. We're not there to talk. We're there to facilitate their learning. So let's go ahead and talk about a couple of the challenges. The biggest challenge that I've heard from teachers are they don't have enough vocabulary. How are they going to talk? That's a very good question. We're going to look at some solutions for that. They uh, might not feel confident to speak, right? Uh, they might have never talked in class before. It's like, I'm usually shy. I don't talk. So, <laughs> or the teacher never calls on me. So I, I'm not, I don't feel confident. 
in class. I, I'm not used to doing that. And the biggest reason too is afraid of making errors. Yeah, that's a big thing. Uh, uh, of course, a lot of us, we're all afraid of making errors, but this is really a challenge for our students. So we need to look at the solutions. How can we get them to talk without them feeling nervous, without them feeling like, ah, I can't talk, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at our solution number one. We need to let the students with little vocabulary, read the instructions and other short pieces of text, right? They can read a paragraph about something. They can read our instructions. That will get them to talk. That will improve their uh, vocabulary little by little, and it will give them a little bit more confidence within time, right? So no need to worry about a student that only knows a few words. That's okay. We can get them to talk by using uh, our instructions and our paragraphs, right? Solution number two, use icebreakers. Now, I really like this because when we use icebreakers at the beginning of class to talk about something, it gets them feeling calm and it's all right. It's just an English class. No worries, right? For example, what I like to do on my Monday class, I say, what did you do last week? And every single Monday, I don't care how boring and repetitive it gets, it's not boring and repetitive for them because they can learn how to say something different for what did you do last weekend. It gets them thinking in the past little by little so they can come up with more ideas and more vocabulary. Then on my Friday class or the last class of the week, I say, what will you do this weekend? They see the difference between our past and our future. They see the difference between last and this. So it gets them to talk a little bit, uh, little by little, with a little bit more vocabulary, right? I, the thing that I like about this, too, is they can do this at home. No? We can have this for their homework. Hey, your homework is what did you do last weekend? Make sure you bring it to class. And then they read their sentence, right? So it's a little bit easier for them to open up. Now, let's go ahead and look at our third solution. Have the students try to explain the theory of grammar. Now, what do I mean by this? We could say, for example, what is the present continuous? Yeah, then a student could say, teacher, subject plus to be plus verb plus ing. Ah, very good, right? It gets them to, to express how, how, how a certain grammar topic is. And it can also give ideas, right? It doesn't have to be correct. It just has to get them talking, right? Uh, today, I had a class about prepositions. And I said, what's a preposition? Give me all the examples you can think of. And then I focused it on two that we were talking about that day. Yeah? It gets them talking. It gets them feeling a little bit more comfortable with the class. Now, solution four have the students correct other sentences. Uh, this is where our chat comes in very handy uh, because we can have the students privately send a sentence to us. Then the, the teacher puts the sentences on the board and then we go through one by one. Is this correct? Why not? What happened? No one knows that it's their sentence, so they don't feel overwhelmed. It gets them talking. It gets them feeling with a little bit more confidence, and it gets them learning, right? The important part is that they're learning, okay? So four solutions down. Wah! Eight more to go. <laughs> So let's go ahead and take a look at our solution number five. And I love this one. This was a fantastic idea that I heard of to implement the three, two, one strategy. This, in, 
decreases our student talk time and it increases the fluency. Now, what do we mean by three, two, one? Maybe some of you are familiar with this, uh, doing this in class, but it simply means we're talking about our weekends, right? In three minutes, tell me about your weekend. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. Three minutes, they have to talk. Yeah, of course, this is going to be a little bit, maybe a high beginner, low intermediate to get them talking, right? Three minutes is a long time. But now we can say, okay, in two minutes, tell me the same information about about your weekend. It gets them talking faster and it gets them to summarize a little bit what they did uh, during their weekend, right? And then you go to minute one. Now in one minute, tell me about your weekend. Again, faster and more of a summary. It's a really cool technique. I encourage you guys to, to take a look at the technique. It's really cool, okay? So, Three, two, one, increases fluency and our student talk time. Are you guys ready for number five? Let's go ahead and take a look at number five, number six. We're gonna use our turn and talk strategy, okay? Now you're probably thinking now, what is this? What is our turn and talk strategy? I'm going to play a video because I think that they will be able to explain it just a little bit better than me. So let's go ahead and take a look at our video. Turn and talk is basically an opportunity for the students to interact with each other. Um, usually you can do it as a warm up or a closing, but usually you ask them a question, an essential question related to the content that you're teaching. How are our adaptations and natural selection related, okay? I want you to turn and talk. So that means turn to your shoulder partner and talk about this question. And I'll, I'll read the question out loud and I'll tell the students, I want you to go ahead and turn to your shoulder partner, or turn and talk, and discuss this question. And it's a great way for the kids to sort of help each other remember what we learned from the last class or sort of, sort of give each other ideas of what we're talking about today. What I like the most about turn and talk is letting the students talk to each other and sort of help teach each other um, because it's easy for me as a teacher to stand up there and talk and tell them information but it's interesting to see what they remember and how they explain things to each other as opposed to how maybe I might say something that might be a little too extended and um, they'll be able to phrase it in a way that's more seventh grade teen friendly. Okay, so we have an idea uh, of how to use turn and talk. Of course, when we have our virtual meetings, we can't just say, okay, turn to your neighbor and talk, right? Because having all the microphones on, that would be pretty difficult. So what do we do? Breakout rooms. Breakout rooms are a wonderful thing. I love breakout rooms. We can have a question on the board. We can go back to what did you do this weekend? Or what is your favorite color? Or what is your favorite TV show and why? Give them a question, send them in their breakout rooms for a couple of minutes. And then you can, as a teacher, you can pop in to the breakout rooms to hear what they're saying. But also tell the student, I need you to write down what did she do this weekend? And it turns it to the third person too. So that's really cool. So when they go back to the main room, you can say, okay, what did Maria do this weekend? She, da, 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 da. What did Antonio do this weekend? He did, da, 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 da. And it changes the first person to third person and it gets them talking, right? Gets them talking. All right, so we're down to the last few solutions that we have. This one I really like as well. I love all of these solutions. This one, we need to play music at the beginning of or during class. This is a really interesting, I was reading a paper about this and it said that playing music at the beginning of a class 
it creates a calm atmosphere. It creates a way that um, a, a safe atmosphere to learn. Yeah, it doesn't technically have to be in English or Spanish or anything. It can just be background music, play some Mozart, and there you go. Why is this so important in our classes? For example, if we're having a conversation and we have music in the background, it's going to draw drown out all of the other conversations that we might hear, right? So it's going to make those beginners, they're going to say, oh, okay, well, I can do this because nobody's listening to me because all I can hear is music. Life is good. It's going to get those shy students feeling a little bit more confident too because they're not going to hear the conversations of others. They're going to focus on the music, focus on what they want to uh, talk about and go from there, right? So this is a pretty cool one. You guys should try this out for sure. I'll go ahead and send in the chat. I will send a really cool um, link that has a, like an hour or two of background music that I really like. I actually had one student, he was trying to write his sentences and he said, teacher, where is the music? And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> so they get used to it and they kind of expect it in order for them to learn and to be calm and to just focus on what they're doing. So I, I really, really like this tip here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our solution number eight. Eee! I really like this one. This one's really cool. So we can play board games. Board games are really popular right now online. They're really interactive. Uh, there are many different topics. The other day I found one with all, can you, can you ride a bicycle? Can you uh, jump this high? Can you <laughs> like, I mean, a whole bunch of questions about abilities and disabilities, right? Um, this one, for example, talks about all about you, right? Talks about favorites, talks about your hobbies, uh, talks about what you like to do. So on the link, on the link, you're able to click on the dice and then it will roll the dice for you. You're able to move the pieces. You can have up to five uh, students or uh, players. And you just move along the board. And it's really cool because they, they catch on to things like go back to the start, go forward, roll again, right? And these, these things, you know, they're very good vocabulary words. What I like to do as well is if the person rolls the dice and they have to move, another person asks them the question. Then the, the next person rolls the dice and so forth. And the person that just answered the question has to ask the, sec the, the continuous, the siguiente, the next question. <laughs> So that's what I really like about it because it gets them to have a conversation. And I like it too, because they feel less nervous. They're more focused on the finish button, the finish uh, part than they are about talking. So if, if they're focused on something else, they're going to feel relaxed and calm. And then they're not going to worry about the mistakes they make or they're not gonna worry about being shy or maybe not having enough vocabulary, things like that. They're just, they're just focused on that, on that finish, right? On winning, okay? All right, good. This is, this is actually uh, something that I really, really like to do with my students. So solution number nine, this is super duper important. We need to remind your students that it's normal to make mistakes. It's okay. We can all laugh together. No worries. I have so many stories that I have done <laughs> in Spanish. So many mistakes and they're terrible. And I like to tell them to my students 
because then they they feel like oh okay she understands me she's gone through this process so so she knows that it's okay to make mistakes and and it's fun so we can always laugh together and make sure that the students know that from day one from the very first class right okay good so i promised you nine solutions i'm going to give you three more bonus solutions okay and these are really cool too so our bonus tip number 10 we're going to talk about our positives and or our affirmatives and our negatives now what do we mean by this okay let's take a look at our next slide for example we can say a description about this we got Wuhan Perez. We got the Colombia flag. We've got Barranquilla highlighted. And we got someone shaking their hand. They could probably make a pretty good conversation about that, right? For example, hello, my name is Juan Perez. I'm from Colombia. The city capital is Bogota. Nice to meet you. Beautiful. I love it. Okay. But look. There's only 19 words. How can we make this more? How can we get them to talk even more about the same topic? Let's take another look at how we can use our negatives to get in there too. Look at these two beautiful paragraphs. Hello, my name is Eduardo. My last name is not Alberto. My last name is Ca uh, Castro. My last name is not Castillo. I'm from Bogota. I am not from, right? Do you see that? It's a positive, and then it gives you to your negative. But look at the words. Look at how many more words they have used. Almost four times as many words just by adding not to all of the information that they've already had. This is going to increase their vocabulary as well which is our main goal is our being facilitators. And it's gonna help them feel comfortable again. Uh, and if, if we have our beginning, right? Our low level students, we can have them write it down and then they can read it, right? So it gets them talking. They feel confident because they're reading. Yeah, so this is a really, really good tip that I found. So. Uh, keep this one in mind as well. So what do you think bonus number 11 is? Tip number 11. Hmm. Let's take a look. Echoing, echoing technique. I'm not sure if anyone has ever heard of the echoing technique, but this is pretty cool. So our echoing technique, what does it do? It creates natural speech. It creates interjections. It creates word whiskers. I'm not sure if everybody knows what word whiskers are, but this is like, um, and like, and oh yeah, and hmm, right? Those are our word whiskers. Uh, most people have something that they always say <laughs> when they are speaking. I always say, uh, <laughs> or yeah. <laughs> also, it helps them to actively listen, which is very important. If they're listening to a natural conversation, then and they uh, they imitate you, they are going to even sound more natural, right? So these three tips. Now let's put this into a practice, right? If we have student is a teacher is B, for example. You can even do this between two students, right? I had eggs and toast for breakfast. Oh, you had eggs and toast for breakfast? Yeah, I had coffee with milk too. Nice, you had coffee and milk too. Then I worked for six hours. You worked for six hours? Really? Do you see how we put it first person and then it changes to second person when you're repeating, right? But it's echoing, it's saying the same thing 
adding an interjection, interjection or a word whisker, like, oh, yeah, nice, really? Okay, cool. That's great, right? We, we add those in and it sounds like a nice, natural conversation, right? Okay, good. So let's go ahead and do our bonus tip. Number 12, dun, dun, dun. we are going to give them prompts of questions instead of questions themselves. Okay, so the, the most common question is, where are you from, right? If we just say, where are you from? We're stealing what they could be saying, right? But if we say, ask, Maria, ask Julia where, where she is from. What would she do? She would ask the question, right? And then Julia would answer the question. What if you only have one student? Yeah, you can do the same thing. Have the student answer the question as well. This increases their vocabulary. It makes them feel more comfortable, natural speech everything that we've talked about, right? So for example, in this uh, prompt, we have ask him what his name is, ask him where he's from, ask him which city he's from, and tell him that it's nice to meet him. So our students, what are they gonna say? They're gonna say, what's your name? Answer, my name is Carlos. Where are you from? I'm from Peru. Where are you from in Peru or what city? I am from Chiclayo. Tell him it's nice to meet him. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So they're having a conversation with themselves, but it's increasing their talk time. That's 70-30. Remember, 70% students, 30% us. We are just the facilitators. Yeah. They need to be talking. Okay. So. We've learned many, many different things that we can do in our classrooms, right? Many different things. We can do board games. We can listen to music. We can uh, ask them prompts instead of questions. We can do what did you do last week and what did you do next week and many different things. But I want you guys to take a look at our last poll. I'm going to go ahead and type this in the chat. I want you to tell me, students should clarify concepts, facilitate learning, read questions and explanations, correct mistakes, try to define concepts, or number six, one, three, four, and five, or one, two, three, and five. What should our students be doing? I'll give you guys a Couple minutes to do your poll. Think about it, it's a tough one. <laughs> what should our students be doing? Clarifying the concept, facilitate our learning, read questions and explanations. What should they be doing? Go ahead and type your answer. Click on the answer in the link below. Okay, good. So the majority have, have mentioned, yes, one, three, four, and five. Very good. One, three, four, and five. They should clarify the concepts, right? They can say, okay, present continuous is subject plus to be and so forth, right? Number three, they should read questions explanations, definitely they can do this. Number four, correcting mistakes. Remember, uh, you can write all of the sentences in a private chat 
and then have the students correct the mistakes where they think the error is. And then number five, try to define uh, concepts as we talked about as well. So as teachers, what do we do? We facilitate the learning, correct? They do not do this. <laughs> this is the thing that we need to do, okay? So, wow, great job, you guys. Great job uh, understanding. Uh, do, does anyone have any questions? You can go ahead and write your questions in the chat box. You can raise your hand if you want. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Wow, no questions. All right, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for for coming to this presentation. I hope the tips will be able to help you uh, to get your students talking. Hi, I do have a question that this is me. Yeah. Uh, yes, do you have a, a story, a story, an inspiring story of a student maybe who had a very difficult time speaking in class, but eventually you were able to help him or her? That's a really good question. I do, I do. I was working with a student, let's see, we started in March and I, I did his recording of his, um, of his beginning class, right? Because I like, to, I like to see the same interview maybe every six months or so. And it was amazing. We were able to do the board game, which I think is really fun, especially for kids. He's about seven years old. And we've been doing board games at once a week. And we do like a lot of questions and answers and things like that. And the growth of his vocabulary, the next time that I did the exact same test, and he even said, teacher, I remember this. I said, really? Well, what are your answers? And so he told me his answers and they were, they were, wow, it was amazing. Just in six months of him working uh, once a week, but just doing board games and reading out loud and asking him, what did you do this weekend? What will you do next weekend? It was, it was amazing. And he was the one actually that said, where's my music? <laughs> He got, he got all upset with me. Where's my music? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so he, he's, really, he's a really good student. He's, he's amazing. And I think that because he talks a lot during the class, that, uh, that he's, he's improving. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Erin. Uh, thank you. And thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Yeah. We really appreciate it. And mm -hmm. we also want to thank all of those in attendance on, and all those watching the recording of this uh, presentation. Thank you very much. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Don't forget that I will have the, uh, the links in the chat in case you guys want anything okay thank, thank you so you. much bye bye thank bye. You. bye bye thanks for watching the recording too bye bye see you guys thank you erin thank you it was awesome bye